Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Cyril Ramaphosa presided over the second South African Investment Conference this week. Terence Screamer attended the event and joins me to offer some insights into the investment pledges and the mood among investors. Hi Terence. Hi Shino. The President was able to announce commitments of 363 billion Rand. Can you give us some flavour for some of these projects? It's really a very diverse array of projects that were announced yesterday. It's uh, pledges of 363 billion rand and another 8 billion sort of in the pipeline because these are projects that have been communicated with government but haven't necessarily passed regulatory approval or received board sanction. So they didn't put them on the list, so that, that takes it to a bit of a higher level. And it's about uh, 17 to 20 percent better than the pledges that we received in 2018 at the inaugural investment conference uh, in Santon. And the, it's, it's really showing that South Africa has a, a marketplace that's really diverse. It's not just pit to port mining type activity, which does feature quite strongly, especially in the, the, the sort of capital intensive uh, projects. Uh, but it's, it's tourism uh, ventures, it's property developments, it's pharmaceuticals, it's telecommunications, it's ICT, it's, it's automotive, um, it's poultry, so it's agriculture. There's really uh, a lot of, uh, um, it's the, the breadth of the projects is quite impressive to see. And I think uh, that was actually, I think the, the, the eye opener for, for, I suppose, the foreign investors that were in, in, in town yesterday. Uh, there were uh, people from 22 different countries there, and even for South Africans to see the sort of the breadth of the marketplace, I think, is quite impressive. Are these genuine promises, or is it simply a repackaging of business as usual? I think it's a mixture of both as usual. I think that there are genuine investments. I think that these will be made by these businesses, but if you look at uh, the nature of the companies that are making the announcements. Mostly it's the usual suspects, people that have a fairly big established presence in South Africa. I suppose the biggest ticket item announced was the, the 50 billion pledge by MTN, which is a similar type size to the, the, the pledge made by Vodacom at the 2018 event. And that's really, okay, there's, there's a growth element to it, but it's really about stay in business capital. Similarly, if you look at lo some of the large mining uh, investments that, are going to, that were announced, these are things that, for instance, Exara Group, 20 billion rand. These are projects that are so, sort of stay in business or s expansionary brownfield type. There are some greenfield projects, but uh, these, are, uh, these are mostly brownfields building on the presence that we uh, really uh, that they really have in South Africa. But it is still very positive, you know, that companies are still seeing an opportunity to invest to grow off their platforms. I think it was very uh, interesting to see Toyota is going to uh, find a replacement for the Corolla. You know, Corolla has been made in South Africa for many, many years. Uh, from the end of next year, the, or in 2020, they closed down that production. And by the end of 2021, we're going to see a new passenger model. They haven't announced which. So I think th those sort of things, they're, they're sustaining operations. The suggestion is that these uh, investments which are mostly a sort of a some are one to two year horizons others are over a five year horizon like MTN will uh, create and sustain over 400,000 jobs and I think that the other uh, you know so it's important to showcase that South Africa still is an investment opportunity for businesses that have a record in South Africa and then there are some new entrants coming through so it is a mixed picture I mean th some of this would have most of these projects would have happened whether there was an investment conference or not. But I think it's, an, an, it's, a, it's a powerful, uh, visible, outward sign that uh, business is still ticking over in South Africa despite all the difficulties that they've faced over the last decade. What were some of the main messages from the President and investors during this year's gathering? Well, the ma main message from the President is that we, we, we've heard you. We know that the business and investment climate has not been a, a very good one for the last decade and we know that we're growing too slowly we know that there's a number of risks facing um, South Africa and your businesses and we are steadily if if a little bit slowly uh, addressing some of those binding constraints to your growth 
Um, the, the usual suspects were raised, you know, the, the visa regime, and I think we've seen some real progress in that area. But, you know, the, the, the devil's still in the detail and the experience. Can businessmen get their, their visas? Can tourists come into South Africa without, without unabridged uh, birth certificates for their children, for instance? You know, really the, the rubber hits the road at that officialdom where you, have the, where you come to, uh, across uh, the official that stamps your passport or signs off on your business visa. Uh, I think there's still going to be um, issues around there. But, you know, there's at least the sing signal from the top is that we need to clear the way for, for, for uh, people, investors that need to bring in people, scare skills. We need to make sure that the tourism economy is growing again. The usual suspect again around broad hard demand, broadband spectrum. We've been talking about this, <laughs> I don't know, for over 10 years, I suppose. But it's really coming to crunch time, as MTN said yesterday. You know, we, there's co capacity constraints now in the, in the, the way the, the frequencies are getting very congested. And we need, if we want to lower the cost of data and also digitize our economy into the fourth industrial revolution, we need to create capacity. And this, I uh, think, again, progress as a policy uh, framework in place, there's a, a process, uh, a bidding process that's going to be launched under ICASA. So again, progress. Not much was said about the mining environment. Uh, I think there, again, I think there has been some progress there. But generally, there was a message um, that these constraints are still niggling and uh, government needs to take them seriously and really just deal with them. And then the president made some more sort of audacious promises around for instance, getting our, improving our status and, and doing business in that World Bank ranking, we know we dropped down again this year. And he's again set the target of getting into that top 50 level. we in the more the sort of 80, 80 levels at the moment, 80 ranking at the moment, which is not very good. And one of the uh, big ticket items there is to get business registration moving. And there's a pilot project now underway to get this business registration, which has been taking uh, multiple days, uh, if not months, down to a, a single day. And at the conference, the president promised that he's going to put pressure that it be hours, not day, a day. So there's those sort of symbolic, and but also very important uh, messages going out that we, we're hearing you. We, we hear that it's, it's difficult. And uh, there is also a sort of a, an enthusiastic response to the investors, basically saying we realize that uh, it's not a very easy time to invest. The world economy is slowing. South Africa's, uh, you know, got a number of risks. So th this, the fact that there is this investment happening in the economy is very positive. So all around, I think the mood uh, and the message there was more. There's more and more alignment between uh, what investors and business wants and what government's prepared to give. But still, there's niggling issues that need to be uh, taken out of the system if we're really going to start ramping up and getting to this target of $100 billion within that five-year horizon starting in 2018. We're still some way off that. But I think there's signs that if we can get these microeconomic reforms in place and make the commitments to macroeconomic stability that we're starting to see at the medium-term budget policy statement, it was a dismal a statement, yet it, within that statement there were these commitments to claw back and to try and rebuild that stable platform, a platform which I think the President again emphasised yesterday, without which it's going to be hard to attract investment and without investment it's going to be hard to get this gro economy growing again and obviously without growth all the other social issues of uh, unemployment, of poverty and inequality, there's just no chance of moving the needle there. So we need to get this, this part of the growth uh, formula, the investment component, moving and moving as fast as we can. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.